Goedenavond, bonsoir à tous. Good evening, everybody. Uh, my name is Petrus Kemme, and on behalf of the Flanders Architecture Institute, I would uh, like to welcome you to tonight's lecture in the series ACROSS. Uh, ACROSS is a collaboration between Architecture, A plus in Belgium, the Faculty of Architecture at the University of Liège, and the Flanders Architecture. And in this series, we aim to cross borders in, uh, in architectural discourse. First and foremost, there is the linguistic border, and so we invite uh, young architects to present their work on the other uh, side of the country. So French-speaking architects are usually invited to the single in Antwerp to present their work, and Flemish architects uh, present their work in Liège. Uh, but we also try to cross a generational border, and so each time we ask uh, an established architect of the region that hosts the, the lecture to introduce the office. Um, the current circumstances, of course, prevent us from doing this as we usually do with a live audience. So we have taken the opportunity to present uh, this lectures, uh, these lectures from the offices uh, themselves. So tonight uh, we are coming to you from uh, Brussels, where uh, tonight's uh, office is uh, working from. Uh, tonight's office is Mammut, which was founded in uh, 2014 by uh, Mathieu Boussana and Sébastien Dachy. They work from La Vallée, which is a beautiful site in uh, St. Jans Molenbeek that you can see behind me. Uh, is a beautiful place in which there is a lot of creative industry, a lot of people meeting each other. And in fact, that, that uh, environment is quite fitting because Mahmoud uh, on their website presents itself as an office that embraces duality. Or to use their exact words, each project benefits from a process of reflection that oscillates between dynamic opposites. What those opposites might be and how it feeds their architecture, uh, I have no doubt they will tell you in a few minutes. But uh, before that, they will be introduced by a, uh, an established architect, as mentioned before. And tonight, that is uh, Els Klaassens. Els Klaassens is, uh, uh, apart from being a teacher at KU Leuven, she's one of the founders of uh, architect Els Klaassens, Tanya van den Busse, uh, an office that has established itself uh, within uh, architecture in uh, uh, the architectural field in Flanders over the uh, last 20 years or so. Um, and they, they established that name through projects that are equally, uh, um, equally powerful and, and sensitive. Before giving the floor to Els, however, I would like to thank uh, a few people. First and foremost, uh, the Flemish government, then also the Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles, uh, Brussels Capital Region, and uh, Dieter and Imo. Um, then I would also uh, like to point out that uh, if during the lecture you have questions, you are free to, uh, to uh, uh, submit them in the comment section and uh, we will try to, uh, to relay them to the architects. With that, I would like to pass on the floor to uh, Els to introduce Mahmoud Architect. We met each other two years ago at the presentation of the Belgium Building Award. We were seated at the same table I was the only Dutch speaker in a French speaking group, a small cross, so to speak. We started talking, but the prize giving ceremony is of course the event of such an evening. Well, I almost chatted over the announcement of their Moment de Gloire as Rookie of the Year. They heard it, I didn't. So I will keep this introduction short as not to make this mistake again. Nevertheless, this encounter probably is the origin of the invitation to introduce them today. Thank you for that. Um, many have done it before me, but I cannot resist the opportunity to express my enthusiasm for the ACROSS formula. It gives young, promising architects a forum to tell their first stories, and this across the language border. A multiple hit, in other words. But what makes a young architect a promising architect? For many beginning architects, one of their first assignments is the renovation of a terraced house. Une maison mitoyenne, a rijhuis, as we all know in Belgian cities. This is sometimes not taken as a serious commission. And it is a bit scorned. But in fact, it's not at all an assignment to neglect. On the contrary, 
It's a challenging design task, which unfortunately, unfortunately is often messed up. Bringing it to a meaningful conclusion can be seen as an indicator of the designer's talent. The question in this commission is very similar in most cases. A house between two common walls, the Piano Nobile is an enfilade of three rooms that becomes less noble towards the back. Entrance hall and staircase are next to the two front rooms. The second middle, middle room is, has too little daylight. The contact between the outside space at the back is almost non-existent. The basement is too poor a living space, but too good a cellar. The client's budget is small. If an architect can bring this design task to a good and clear result, you may well conclude that he or she has something up the sleeve. And Mahmoud did this did just that and in an outstanding way in their Renier Chalon project in Excel. With one powerful intervention, that is the introduction of a generous staircase in the middle room of the house, they solved the bottlenecks for the contemporary use of the 19th century, century bourgeois home. The house was too large for one unit, but not easy to divide into two autonomous units. This one staircase solves also this problem. A multiple hit too, in other words. The image of this staircase serves the announcement of their lecture in the Across series. The collaboration between Sebastian Dachy and Mathieu Boussana is maybe still at an early stage. For the time being, there seems to be more plans than realizations, and for many projects, they still collaborate with more established practices. But in the short time span of their, of their existence, they already seem to have developed a great consistency. A consistency in approach, in presentation, in clarity. Uh, their recent design for La Maison des Initiatives, a forêt, uh, makes me very curious. How they want to make a big difference through punctual, small interventions. And I hope they will continue in their drive to preserve the existing by integrating dismantled and reused materials and building components. Enough material for a lecture. Hello everyone. Um, thank you very much Els for this nice introduction. Before to start the presentation, we would like to thank, of course, uh, APLUS and the VAE and all the partners for allowing us to give this lecture tonight. We would like to thank also our incredible team who support the office and move the work forward every day. My name is Sébastien Dachy and this is my friend and associate Mathieu Buzana. I will speak tonight, but we will answer the question um, together after the presentation. Mathieu and I founded Mammut about eight years ago. Our collaboration is even a little older since we started doing projects together at the School of Architecture. We have set up our office in Brussels, here in La Vallée, a place very suited to exchanges and creative collaboration. It is rather rare that we talk about our work. We have a certain carefulness toward our production and way of working. We work on each project in a direct, almost frontal way, mainly by drawing up a series of observations and statements, then the project strategies that flows from them. For us, architecture is physical and rational. In this sense, I will not describe us as sharp theorists. We don't have any great concepts or visions that would have guided our work since its beginnings. Rather, we are shaped by practice. This desire to learn and to discover new things in architecture is a process that we hope is far from over. For us, one of the most exciting things about architecture is the constant discovery of new practices, reference that feed us every day. 
This lecture is therefore a great opportunity for us to look back at the project we have developed over the last few years and to try to understand their logic, recurrences and guidelines. We have extracted a series of keywords which are related to each other that will be the main thread of this presentation. But first of all, we would like to start with an Excel sheet. It's a list of our completed projects and of the project that will be soon realized. For each project, we have written down the gross square meters before intervention, then the demolitions, the possible additions, and the total. The result of this calculation is that we have more deconstructed than actually built. This shows a first reality of our practice. We work exclusively on renovation projects. To date, we have no new construction project that have been completed or planned to be. The direct consequence of this observation is that we work closely with what already exists. We therefore don't consider ourselves as urban planner. We actually don't know how to plan a city. The questions we are into are more about how to regenerate the city, how to reuse the building, how to challenge the existing. Exploring and testing the potential of an existing building or site is the starting point of most of our projects. Our projects are mainly attitudes towards an existing context driven by ambitions clearly defined like bringing daylight, increased uses, fluidify circulation, or bring new identity. We have deep trust in the existing, in what is already there. We believe that a building has many lives. Conversion of heritage and change of use is a challenge we regularly face. A recurring question is therefore, how can we reinvest in what already exists without altering it while at the same time emphasize its own qualities and give it a new identity linked to its new functions? We would like to illustrate this question with a project we are currently working on, the project for La Maison des Initiatives de Forêt. The building is located in forest, facing the well-known Wheels Contemporary Art Center. It's on the opposite corner. The building used to be a bank in a relatively austere neoclassical style. The public space was more user-friendly at the time, and this is something that the municipality of Forest wants to change as a new street layout is also planned here for the future. The new function planned for this place is a complex program consisting of a co-working space, places of exchange and meeting for inhabitants, and a multipurpose room to support local initiative as a leverage for social inclusion. For now, we inherit this building, which is currently rather anonymous. The small house next to the old bank is also included in the project. The original building has many qualities of structure, generic organization, and heritage. Our ambition for this project is to reveal these qualities while adapting the expression and use of the building to give it a public identity full of life and exchange. The main strategy is therefore to operate punctually on the ground floor and on the roof. We propose to add elements that clearly display the new public life of this place. On the ground floor, a large display for the shop and a canopy along the co-working cafe. On the roof, a winter garden for the community and a terrace that will respond to the rooftop of the wheels. With these simple additions, the public and open identity of the place is revealed while preserving the integrity of the existing. Here is the result in model. That was the competition proposal. Inside, the function fit logically into the existing building without altering it. Here is the rooftop, which clearly displays its public function, and the winter garden, which provides an informal place for the community. It was a space that was not requested in the competition brief but we believe it's necessary to activate this kind of community with that kind of place. We don't see the programs as closed and defined data. 
Rather, we see the building and spaces as potential sources of use. Here is a typical plan. In black, it's the existing, and in blue, the modifications. We believe that a great strength in the project is to succeed in integrating the program into the existing. It's not the program that guides the space, but the opposite. Not that we don't care about the program, but we always have confidence in the existing to be able to integrate it. And we keep in mind that this function will not last forever. In 100 years or 50 years or maybe even sooner, this building will be reassigned again. It is therefore an obsession for us to make sure that no intervention will, made to, will be made to constrain the existing, as this, as this could block future changes. Here is a view of a model of the typical level. Most of the walls, doors, stairs, etc., are maintained. Oops. The, ma the material and equipment are kept as much as possible. Indeed, in addition to their value in terms of grey energy and heritage, we believe that all these qualitative elements also contribute to the identity of the place. In this renovation and reuse project, the reuse of materials came quite quick naturally to us. For the moment we decide to maintain a building rather than to demolish it, it seems obvious to extend the field of reuse. For us, to talk about reuse means, above all, always maintaining as much as possible of what already exists. Then, we try to integrate the materials from the demolition and dismantling into the project. If external input is needed, we try to look for re reusable materials, either at Rotor or elsewhere in, on the second mar hand market. These reused materials are a good way for us to express the identity of a project. The first project where we were able to experiment with reuse is the project Charles Malice. It's a project that we did in collaboration with LD2 Architecture and Stephanie Willox for the municipality of Molenbeek. It is the transformation of a former cigarette factory into a public administrative center. Here too, it's the existing and mainly the beautiful concrete structure that guided the way in which the program was integrated which mainly consists of a waiting room for the public and a dozen counters. The new elements are clearly identified and are made out of steel and wood to allow them to be dismantled one day. Here, in addition to reusing the entire existing building, we also made use of reused materials. These are the paving stones <laughs> used to cover the floor of the waiting room, which are Belgian porphyry paving stone from the street. The paving stones are cut on their top to be flat for good accessibility. The aim was to give a public identity to the interior of the building as an extension of the public space. The public identity is therefore given by the reuse of a typical material, bringing a collective image of the public space. And here you see a photo of the paving as one would have done with a street. Another project we would like to show you about reuse is the project Renier Chalon. It's a project that we have done with the Atelier d'Architecture OXO. The existing building is a classic Brussels townhouse with the living room in a row and a side staircase. Here is a schematic section of the house. The house is quite big. A certain heritage quality was preserved in the rooms on the street side. The client's request was to divide the house in two a duplex under the roof for rent, and the two first floor for them to live in. A new staircase inside the house was therefore needed. This is a basic situation and a very typical request in Brussels, and we try to respond strategically to it in relation to the existing. The new staircase take place naturally in the central room, which are the least bright. In the tradition of Victor Horta, the staircase become a real place to live, with wide landings connecting the floors in split levels. The ground floor 
on the garden side is lowered to reach the garden level, allowing an additional floor to be integrated on top. On the street side, the beautiful rooms are completely preserved. Here you can see the room on the street side, which were well preserved and restored to their former glory. When we removed the wallpaper, we discovered traces of the old wooden decor. We can still see the pencil strokes of the craftsmen of the time. We decided during the construction process to keep these traces visible simply by fixing them with a transparent varnish. And here you see a synthesis of the main intervention, the staircase leading to the floor taking place in the central room. The ground floor going down to the garden and the kitchen next to the garden. Here all the, the elements are new, but we like to reuse old techniques like here, the struts for the wooden floor. In our opinion, reusing techniques also increase the identity of a place. Looking up to the central room, you can see the staircase spreading out. The right landings are a mix of existing cut floors and new floors. An important detail of this project is the green railing. The, original, the origin of this detail is very down to earth. It comes from the direct application of the norm, which, strangely enough, requires a different height for the landings and for the stairs. In the past, these two heights were set at 90 centimeters, but today it's 1 meter 10 for the landings and 90 centimeters for the stairs. This often leads to tricky connection. We wanted to adjust it with this detail that absorbed the difference in height with the curve. We would like to present you two more almost finished projects that illustrate this idea of identity by reuse. The first project is the project Vandel in Scarbeek. It is the conversion of a former workshop into a house. Again, the base is to keep and to reveal the existing structure. The program fits logically into the three large plateaux of the existing building. The inputs are largely coming from reuse, from any source. It is these elements that will give the house, the housing identity to the place. We approach the reuse of materials intuitively. Many choices and adaptations are made on the building site. Here, for example, the stairs arrive during the process. They were bought on the second-hand market via the website secondmain.be. Since they arrived lately during the site, it was impossible to predict their dimensions. There are therefore some new parts, such as the kite winders, which are tailor-made to allow a good junction. All this is decided on site, during the construction phase. It is not unusual for us to start a construction site without having a clear idea of where the project will lead us. In the second photo, you can see bricks, from walls that, we have been, that have been dismantled. These bricks were reused to make new walls, here with a curve to accommodate the entrance to the dwelling. In this picture, you can see doors that also come from the dismantling of the project. So we have a new wall made out of reused elements. Here you can see the reused stairs installed in the place. They, they layout come directly from their original dimensions. In the picture on the left, you can see the access to the parents' room. A beautiful double door that once marked the entrance to one of the ateliers has been dismantled and reassembled here, integrated into a new partition wall. In the picture on the right, you can see the walls of the shower, which have been covered with white reuse marbled uh, from Rotor, cut to size to match the dimension of the shower and create a soap dish. Here's the contractor team behind, behind all this work. The involvement of the craftsmen and contractors in reuse process is quite important. In this respect, we try to develop a homemade product approach. We believe that craft still has its place in today's construction. 
Even if we are not resistant to it, we avoid integrating ready-made products in our project, like a certain design window frame, a certain tap, a certain floor covering. We find this kind of equipment a bit boring. We greatly prefer the imperfection of reuse and craftsmanship. In addition to this element of reuse, we regularly collaborate with craftsmen, such as Studio Biscuit, ceramists who have their workshop here in La Vallée. They make for us magnificent tiles and other custom-made elements, such as uh, ceramic dress hold that we use for renovating houses and so on. Another almost finished project that we want to, pre to present is the renovation of this uh, building. Uh, it's about the workshop on the ground floor. Oops. The first intervention was to dismantle parasitic elements to create this outdoor space in order to bring daylight and green spaces into the interior of the block. In the background, a micro city garden designed by Hélène Mariage a landscape architect with whom we love to collaborate. On the side facade, we can already see the first elements of reuse. The lighting elements, the stone staircase steps recovered from the demolitions, and the window frames. They actually come from another of our construction sites in Brussels, from which they were dismantled and reassembled here. Inside, the living space is very large and self-sufficient. It is simply reorganized by furniture installed in the room. Those furnitures are mainly Quebec's kitchen cabinets bought in the second-hand market. Radiator, tiles, marble shelves, everything is reused materials. Here is zoom on the countertop of one of the kitchen elements. The recovered marble slab did not correspond perfectly to the dimension of the, cub the Quebec unit. That's why we cut them again to give new dimensions that fit the cabinet. This kind of on-site adaptation is typical of reuse and leads to an expected result that we really like. Here we see a view of the recovered windows frame from the inside. The existing openings were larger than the frames and were filled with reused bricks from the demolitions. The tiles, kitchen, bathroom equipment, everything in this project is reused. The resilience of a building is something that fascinates us. We were able to test this with great pleasure in this project called Belgrade. It's a competition proposal that we made with our great friends Carton Entuedri Architecten to transform this mastodon located in forest. This brutalist masterpiece was designed in 1971 by the architect group Osia. It used to be the headquarter of Cinzano in Belgium, producer of alcoholic liquor. Then in the 90s, a furniture and object dealer moved there. And today the competition is for the conversion into housing. This will therefore already be the third assignment for this structure, which only existed for 50 years we find it quite incredible. Everything about this building fascinates us. Its daring implantation, its frontal expression on the street, and above all, its structure, so strong and powerful. At the beginning of the competition, we have made a model of the structure to try to understand it better. This model shows both the generic side with the repetitive grid, and at the same time, the exceptional side with the cantilevers, the horizontal and vertical offsets. To be resilient, maybe a structure needs this generic and exceptional character at the same time. It is therefore with great ambitions for the reuse of this structure that we approach the project. Very quickly, the references of brutalist housing guided us. Here, the reference of Alison and Peter Smithson for the Golden Lane housing project. The domestic character in brutalism is clearly given by the expression of the structure in relation to the nature. It is therefore in that sense that we have developed the project. Here, a collage by Els from Carton and Tuedri, which shows the atmosphere and ambition. 
and the model of the competition. The strategy developed for this project are to preserve and highlight the concrete structure and facade, and to bring nature everywhere in the dwellings. The narrowness of the plots in relation to the building made this exercise challenging. This was solved by working in section. Here is a series of cuts, which shows the very rich range of situation within this structure. Every square meter of soil, terrace, balcony is used to bring nature. Here, a cross-section view of the ground floor dwelling, which are particularly enclosed. Micro gardens have been developed with a very precise, precise choice of planting by Hélène Mariage and small features such as threshold with plant containers, mirror, etc. that complement the garden. We think the quality can be found elsewhere than in the big surface. An interior view of this same dwelling, which sums up our ambitions for this project to live in the structure and to let nature in. Once again, the generic and yet exceptional character of the structure makes it possible to test its resilience and to fit out dwellings that would not have been imagined in a classic new housing building. And to conclude this project, here is a view from the collective garden inside the block. The building and its structure, thanks to its resilience, evolves over time. All the reflection we have had so far have an underlying common duality. They related the building to time. We are confident that the existing can always be a solid basis for a project. Projects such as Belgrade or Chalmalis show that an exceptional structure increased the potential for conversion. When we work on projects requiring to create new volumes, we try to design these volumes following the same logic, resilient structures over time. In other words, we try to make good future existing so that others can one day make remarkable conversions of these buildings. The competition proposal for the winery Gudul that we were lucky enough to design with Swedish architect Arof Frick explore this theme. In the middle of the vast turn and taxi site in Brussels is a former train station with its dedicated plot. Today, the station is a ruin. The competition brief was to renovate it into a place for wine tasting and to build behind it a new building that will house the actual wine production with the vats, the bottling lines, etc. Although the suggestion to renovate the old station and create a new building for wine production is with good intention, we believe it would have been a rigid and enclosed result. Also, the renovation of the station with high heritage value will have absorbed most of the budget allowed for the global project. Instead, our proposal aims to create a light structure over the project site which extends to the perimeter of the plot and over the existing train station. The greenhouse envelops the site. It is both a protection to the ruin and a flexible infrastructure to place new programs. The proposal looks for an open-ended development of the winery, which can be adapted and transformed over time. Based on a module of 9 meters by 9 meters, the structure uses standard construction materials and is made out of component that can be dismounted and remounted. Once again, the program fits into the structure, and in this case, the production and tasting wine are merged in within the whole. Here is an inside view where you can see the relationship between vineyards, tasting, and wine production. The ruin of the station is colonized by nature. The structure protects the ruin and gives it a second life as such. The main ambition is to leave the program free, like a microcosm that can develop over time. 
This is why we have made the model in two stages. The photo you have just seen were taken on day one. Then we made the model evolve to imagine the result 10 years after. Vegetation has become more and more important. New platforms, stairs and interior volumes have been installed. Wine production is increasing. The structure is growing more complete, the layout adapt. In the meantime, the ruin, the ruin does not move. One can say this is timeless and timely architecture. This duality between timeless and timely architecture appeared to be recurrent in the retrospective discussion that we had on our project. We are not sure whether timeless is more important than timely or the other way around. We feel that a project can embrace both opposites. We try to illustrate this with a last project. This is a project we are currently working and developing at the office for a cultural center for the municipality of Jet. The location of the project is in the north of Jet, at the end of a small pedestrian street that houses the contemporary art center Atelier 340. The project is located where you can see the two big posters with the pigs. The original project of Atelier 340 foresaw a global vision on this little street. Here is an original elevation, full of postmodern charm. The plot that concerns us is the last one on the right. You can see that the planned building was kind of a ruin. It is a premonitory image. Since the whole project was carried out according to, according to this plan, except for this one, whose construction was stopped during the building process. Only the ground floor structure was built and it has been abandoned for 30 years now. Our proposal for this project is based on the existing structure, however, Rather than proposing this pessimistic postmodernist vision of the torn city, we propose a building that ends the street in a more optimistic way. Here is a photo of the concrete structure as it exists today. And here a schematic elevation. Our proposal is, is simply to extend this structure over two floors with a structure of wooden pillars and slabs. The flexibility of this very simple and generic structure is increased by the vertical cir circulation that has come out of the surface of the floors, as Gordon Bunskeft will probably have done. The wall separating the neighbor is doubled by a storage space behind a curtain. In this way, the floors are completely free and flexible in use. The sailing height of each level are different to allow for a variety of possible uses. Here are some possible plans for the ground floor and for the upper floors. In the 90s, this building was supposed to house a didactic greenhouse for the Atelier 340. At the time of the competition, two years ago, the demand was to set up a neighborhood cultural center there, mainly to organize exhibitions and small gathering. Today, two years after the competition, while we are still in the study phase, the municipality wishes to set up a part of the Academy of Arts and Theater there. This makes three quite different uses over 30 years of life of a, new of a few concrete pillars, which lead us to come full cycle with the beginning of our presentation. We think that the building has several lives, or rather several temporalities, and this is what we could call timeless and timely architecture. Timeless is the structure of the building. It is longer than a human lifetime. 
In order to be strong and durable, it must be resilient to change and therefore designed accordingly. This is why we always try to consider in our projects the existing as a system to preserve in order to achieve an evolutionary architecture. And when we think of new structure or hybrid structure as in this project, we try to plan them accordingly. So this could be an illustration of the timeless side of this project. The existing structure, the foundations, the new structure, which is stacked up and the vertical circulation next to it. The rest is timely. Timely is what gives the project its current identity. It is its use, its functionality, its expression at a certain time. We don't see it as a secondary or less important than timeless. The two simply work together. These are the elements for this project that could be assimilated to the timely aspect. Once again, working with components makes it possible to dissociate these elements from the timeless in order to predict their evolutionary potential. This probably leads to a certain humility with regard to our interventions, because we know that they will be adapted, transformed or even erased in the future. Here is the front facade in elevation. In this project, we try to make the timely and the timeless visible and understandable. Here is the rear facades and the side facades, which sums up the whole. We focus on the balance between timeless and timely architecture. Looking back at it, we see our architecture both as it is day and of all time. Each project benefits from a process of reflection that oscillates between dynamic opposites, structure and habitability, system and domesticity, existing and tailor-made, generic and specific. We consider our work to be consistent when it embraces those duality. And that be, I guess, our conclusion for today. We'll join you. Um, yeah, Mahmoud, I would invite you to uh, uh, join me. Yeah. Um, I have a. Yeah, I'm very impressed with indeed, as you called it, also in your conclusion, the the humility of your architecture, the the attitude of 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 uh, of. Um, of um, First, looking at what exists and having a confidence, as you put it, in, in what is already uh, already there. Um, at the same time, uh, as an architect, I feel like you. Uh, that doesn't mean that you. Uh, let me rephrase that. I, I think, as an architect, that puts maybe even more weight on your shoulders to position yourself as you you uh, really thoroughly read uh, the materials, the the spaces. There's a lot of moving parts. There's a, uh, it's a, an intensive process. Um, and it seems that in, in, in many of the projects there is a, a very delicate balance between reading what exists and then writing what your uh, intervention is. Um, can you elaborate a bit more, bit more on the process and, and how, how you uh, choose that line? Where do you intervene? Surely. Um, we have a process quite elaborate to, to develop projects. Uh, at the first time, we, we spend a lot of time in the building to understand uh, how does it work with the light, um, what are the good thing of the building and the bad thing of the building, what um, it's the uh, historical uh, beginning of the building and all, all the ads uh, in all the time, 
and, and the history. And so that's it's also a great work on plan and uh, res research of archive. Um, and after that, uh, we try really basically to to match the program. Like, oh, does it work if we put that in that room and that in that room? So it's really um, basic, um, but based on a, a really a work on plan and a sensitive work on site. Mm -hmm. um, if you want to. No, but that, that maybe leads me to to the next question is um, the the process. There, there seems to be a lot of work involved in, in this thorough reading of spaces and. Uh, um, and also your, your uh, as you said, like your preference for reuse and custom uh, elements rather than generic uh, elements. Uh, maybe to use the dirty words in architecture, how do you, how does this uh, manifest itself economically or how do you advocate for, for these choices? Of course there, there are changes and, and economically there are initiatives, especially by people like Ruto, who, but at the same time it's still you have to convince your client, I assume. Definitely, and also the contractors. So mm -hmm. that, that's the basic. Uh, but at the same time, um, when we we arrived, really prepared to to to, to explain the project, and it's mm -hmm. a process with the clients mm -hmm. and the contractors, and and so it's really important in the communication and also during the site what we can do with that, with that, and mm -hmm. most of our clients are really in that mm -hmm. kind of reflection. Mm -hmm. And um, I will say also that we select our ambitions. So we, we know that with a certain budget, you cannot do everything everywhere in a house or in a building. So we prefer to focus on certain detail and to leave others more basic or more mm -hmm. simple. Um, yeah. yeah. I see in the meantime that we have a question on uh, on Facebook uh, by Miriam Saud. Uh, would you ever consider building something from scratch? And if so, how would you approach such a project? I have the answer in the other. Ah, there is a model that is key to the answer. Which one? That's the benefit of doing the lecture of doing the brief. Right. So that's a, that's a, a proposal for a theoretical project that we did for uh, the institute <laughs> for the ICA, and um, and it's a it's a room uh, from nowhere, from, can be any time, can be anywhere, and we uh, we did a small animation with that, uh, and the house, uh, the room start to be built, and then it transforms, and again and again. And at the end, you only have the structure and the nature. Mm -hmm. So that's the building uh, from no, f with no context. So not every, build, uh, every project of yours has an existent context. No. Th that's the only one that, that doesn't have any context. <laughs> uh, I'm just checking if there are other questions from Facebook, but it seems not. OK. No, then I uh, would like to finish by thanking you again for a very, uh, very interesting lecture with indeed uh, um, very humble but, but very powerful projects. Um, I would also like to uh, uh, thank once again uh, the, the partners that uh, support us in the Across Lecture Series, which are the Flemish government, um, La Fédération Wallonie-Bruxelles, the Brussels Capital Region and Dieter and Imo. And, um, I would also like to thank once again our partners, uh, A-plus Architecture in Belgium, the University of Liège, and uh, I would uh, like to wish you a good night, but also tell you that in the next slides you will find the details on the next few lectures in this series. Have a good night and thank you for watching. Thank you. Goodbye.